As we're wrapping up here, I just want to show you a couple things that you should know about software before you publish this and make it live. So let's work through some of those things in this lesson. And software here, uh, we have all of our pages and that's going good. I do want to show you about some more user functionality. And so if we wanted to use a magic link at any time, what we could do here is we could either generate a new link or copy this and send it to someone. And so if I copy this and I just enter it in here, what it's going to do is it's going to bring me to the application normally, uh, but it's not right now because we haven't published it. But then once it brings me to the application, it will log me in as that user. So it's a very important link. And so actually, in order to make this link work, why don't we just publish the application? Are we ready? Are we ready to do this? I think so. So let's go up here, go to publish. And there's a couple things here that I want to talk about. The first thing is this is the domain right now that software gives you out of the box. Okay. And we can change this to make it look better. So let's just say video client portal. Okay. So that's going to be the new URL for our application. And then as soon as I hit publish here, that means it's going to be public, visible to everyone else that accesses that domain to access it. Now, if I want to put this on my own domain, I can do that as well by adding a custom domain. And so by adding a custom domain, I can go in and add my own domain like this. And then from there, it's going to give me, it's not going to let me connect to Google, unfortunately. But once I add my domain in there, it's going to give me uh, a couple of fields or values that I need to then take and go into my domain registrar and add those text records to that registrar. So for example, if I belong to GoDaddy, my, my domain name is hosted on GoDaddy. I need to go into GoDaddy, go into that domain section and add the records that are provided below here. And once those records are provided, software will connect our application to that domain. So if you want to go to www.jj.com, that could be possible with the software application. But we don't need to do that right now. Now that you know how to do it, you could do it at a later time. But otherwise, we're actually going to go back here, update that URL, URL again because we got out of it. Video client portal. All right. Oh, it's taken now. And then we'll say instead of video client portal, we'll do um, your client portal and we'll publish that. Excellent. And so that's now visible. And so if we actually go here, open in a new tab, we'll, we should see our application, your client portal. It's not going to show us anything. And the reason is, is we don't have any page right now that we've configured uh, to see anything, right? So let's go and do that. Let's go to our pages um, and let's go to our page rules, okay? And our page rule says that if... For all these rules right now, it's bringing you to the dashboard page. And that's not right because the dashboard page is only accessible to logged in users, okay? So instead, after sign in, dashboard page works. And it works for these two. But after sign out, they should go into the sign in page, okay? For all that. And if they have unauthorized access, they should go to our, let's see, that's, we can send them to either like a four or four page or we can send them to a sign-in page as well. Non-logged in users sign in. Logged in users, we should create a 404 page for this, but for now we can also just send them to, um, back to maybe the dashboard. And so what auth unauthorized access means is that they try to access a page that maybe they don't have access to, and then we'll redirect them automatically with these page rules, all right? And so non-logged non in users, they're gonna go to sign in. Everyone else is gonna go to the dashboard page. Uh, and this is a great way to use your user groups to further customize the user experience of the users working through your app. So now we need to publish those new updates. And with those new updates published, let's see where this brings us. Brings us to our sign-in page. Fantastic. We actually haven't done anything with our sign-in page yet. And that's because when we created this application, it created this page for us automatically, right? So we can sign in here. We can also sign up here for the first time. Both are great. I want to show you this magic user experience, though, this magic link experience. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to this URL, add that there. And now it's going to bring me to this application as that logged in user and welcome back. And actually, we don't have any of this stuff, so it's just saying welcome back. 
And now that I think about it, that experience looks pretty, pretty lame. So why don't we just show uh, a message saying, hey, you don't have any project yet or any invoices yet, or at least no projects yet. Just liven this up a little bit. So let's go to our dashboard page here and let's find our clients and client right there. And then instead of hide entire block, let's do show empty message and say no results, no projects found. No projects. No projects created yet. All right. Now you won't see this on this page yet until I actually go and publish it, right? Uh, and so if I refresh this, you're not going to see anything until I republish it. But if you saw on this one over here, you can see that in the preview mode, that's our sandbox. That's our test environment. Whereas this, this is a real app. Okay. So test environment continues to work, but you can't actually do anything. You can't see those updates until I publish it. So I'm going to publish those updates again. And at that point, my production environment will get those updates. And if I refresh, there's that update. So we're good. We're good. We're, we're doing good here. Let's keep going. So uh, we have that app published. We've shown you custom domains. Let's go over to our sign in page and let's just customize this a little bit more. Let's get rid of that logo. We don't need that. And otherwise, this is already built for us. So that works great. And if we go to the sign up page, let's just get rid of that logo as well. This is where you could add a new logo if you want. You can also create create a new logo for my marketing agency company. And maybe AI could try to create that logo for you if you want. So those logos, they're not great. So we don't need to go with any of those. We could pick a stock image, but I'd just rather not go with any logos at the moment. And man, we're doing good. We're doing good. One last thing here that I want to show you is our data restrictions. And so we've done a lot with conditional filtering. However, conditional filtering is block specific. That means that you have to set that up for each block. Now, global data restrictions is global. It's universal. That means you can create one rule and it will always apply everywhere in your application. So you can add a restriction by going in here, selecting your data source that you want to use. And that's our same data source and selecting which table you want to use, right? And so in this case, what I'm going to say is the projects table. And I want to make sure that the view, meaning that the user can only see the projects, projects name is the logged in users project, right? So in this case, this rule would make it so any user, no matter what, can only see the projects data that they belong to, okay? And that's going to happen app wide. Now we don't want this to happen quite yet because that doesn't, that's not true for admin. This would only be true for client experiences, right? But there's a lot that you can do here. And there's a lot that you can restrict, not only with the view, but with the create, edit and delete. And you can also assign this to certain user groups. So I could say, actually, look at that. I'm assigning it to the client and only clients can see the projects that they belong to. And that could be my global data restriction. And I can go in and add more of these for each table, for each user group, for each action level. And it's happening universal and it's so easy with software. So I just love that feature. A couple other things I want to point your attention to is that our integrations. We have a ton of integrations built in. So if you want to add intercom, Google Analytics or anything like that, you can just enter your analytics ID and it'll be automatically done for you in software. And check out our set settings section here. There's a lot of other things that you can do, including a mobile app. If you're on a specific plan for software, we make it so you're, you have a built-in progressive web app out of the box. You don't need to do anything. And a progressive web app makes it so that you can have an icon on your phone and just click on that icon and it launches your app for you automatically. That's done for you. You can use custom code anywhere you want to embed it. You can adjust your SEO settings everywhere throughout the application. And you also have this really cool thing called app history. So if you ever make any kind of mistakes that you want to revert to, you can go to app history and revert back as well. So that kind of sums it up for this course. I hope you have learned a lot. I have enjoyed teaching you this course. It's been an absolute blast. We built so many things together. And now as a new developer, 
you would have the skills to go out and build internal tools, client portals of any sort for your business and find success with it. If you ever have any questions, please reach out to our support in the bottom right hand corner. Our support is 24 seven. They are tremendous people and they will not only help you with your technical questions, but if you have suggestions of or questions about how should I build this, structure this, et cetera, feel free to message them. Also go on over to our community forum. You can post questions there. You can see what other people are asking. It's a wealth of resource. We also have our product manual where you can find answers to common questions. I'll put all of these links and resources in the academy where this video is hosted for you to access throughout this entire course. Otherwise, I hope you had a blast. I hope you learned a ton and congrats. You built your first application. Go tell the world and I can't wait to see what you built next.